This is State of the Nation on today's News Talk TNT Radio. Well, it's been a while since we've spoken to our friend Barry Nussbaum of uh, Maui, beautiful Hawaii. It's also been a while since any real national news coverage concerning the residents of Lahaina uh, has been pursued. So we figured, you know what? Their plight is still very real, very much in the air as lawyers, politicians, and developers sharpen their knives like vultures uh, as they've descended on this once paradise on earth, Lahaina. Barry, welcome to the show. Um, so good to have you. Uh, American Tooth, uh, Truth Project, by the way, is a website that you can find Barry's writings on americantruthproject.org. Barry, again, welcome to State of the Nation. Thanks for joining us today, buddy. How are you? Aloha. Aloha back at you. It's great to be back with you on today, December 8th. We are exactly four months from the fire today. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, it is a, a sad anniversary of sorts. It was back in August, four months ago today, uh, that we witnessed what see i mean it was i mean it was just the the fire was horrendous the the speed with which it destroyed lahaina was crazy and then of course all the problems started for for the residents the fire was bad enough but after the fire as i mentioned developers swooped into town lawyers swooped into town federal officials local officials what's going on in lahaina today what's happening there well in terms of the reaction, you're 100% correct. Um, Lahaina changed from a sleepy, um, cute, 200-year-old fishing village on the water with shops and restaurants and a place for thousands of people to come every day to um, a disaster zone that's surrounded by six-foot blacked-out fence. I haven't been inside Lahaina since the fire because I'm not allowed. You have to have FEMA clearances to go past the troops. And I'm talking about troops in guard uniforms, National Guard with their big Humvees that are blocking off every entrance. Um, there's probably more lawyers <laughs> yeah. in Lahaina now than residents. I mean, every litigation firm in the country is here. They're on Facebook, Instagram. I get a mailer every day. I get instant messages on my text alerts. Do you want to sign up? We're going to recover money from you. And, and I think, honestly, the big occurrence that has caused these attorney firms to salivate and move here and to associate with local firms all goes back to the mistakes that were made the day of August 8th. Nobody's owned them. They're still there. And they are in 50 foot letters in front of the attorneys that are salivating. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, what they see is they see a big payout. It's, it reminds me of the old Stephen Wright joke. 99% of lawyers give the rest of them a bad name. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but th yeah, th th they've seen the writing on the wall. They've seen that, hey, you know what? I don't know the name of the power company out there in Maui. Uh, I'm sure it's a state run. I don't know if it's state run, state funded, whatever. It's called it is. HECO, Hawaiian Electric Company, HECO. Oh, HECO. So these lawyers have seen that HECO is probably going to be on the hook for this. And I'm sure there's loads. I guess class action lawsuits are being filed as fast as uh, as fast as these folks can uh, can fill out the forms, huh? Well, let me let me tell you why, and and I'm giving you a, an outsider's view. Obviously, we're not in a court of law. It's two guys chatting about it. Sure. A couple days after the fire, there was a press conference. The CEO of HECO stood next to the mayor and said on the air, live, in front of a press conference, we made the decision not to to turn the power off after the fire started. Decisions were made, and that's all she said. And the crowd, the reporters, went silent in stupefaction that she stood up in front of this crowd, which now, by the way, the whole world knows and all the attorneys know. HECO, yeah. HECO which is our electric company, which is private, which, as I understand it, is the main one of the main investors is BlackRock. Um, 
left the power on after the fire started. Now you would think, well, what's the big deal? I also happen to be a witness. I'm a percipient witness in this case. I was coming back from the airport. I was stopped on the highway. Just a small brush fire. We'll have it out soon. I was parked in my truck for four and a half hours as the fire just 2x, 5x, 10x and burned down Lahaina. We yeah. drove over down live power lines to get out of the fire zone. In other words, the power pole tips over because it breaks under incredible the pressure of the wind. The sparks are coming out of the lines right into the dried brush, and the brush is exploding, exploding. Wow. Now, the reason everybody was so upset is instantaneously the power should have been shut off, but it wasn't. And it wasn't a down power line. I personally drove over three or four, and there were hundreds. I've and, watched. you know, Barry, we, 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 saw, we saw some of the, uh, the video. I mean, talking about heartbreak. So people were, were actually cooked alive in their cars trying to get out because of this why they were closing it down. And then now here you have the, the president of HECO on live television saying, yeah, we, we never turned them off. I mean, that is just opening up. Is she still the president of HECO? It gets even better. She's still the president. The wow. county of Maui is suing HECO. The county itself is suing the electric company over it. She then came out with a subsequent press release saying, hours later, we turned it off. But by that point, this whole side of the island had it's 100 hard. foot flames for miles. And you've, if you've never seen a 100 foot wall of flame, you haven't experienced the terror the people here had. And it was being driven by 60, 70, 80 mile an hour winds. The fire department was overwhelmed and it the the rule of the day was get out of the way there's nothing yeah. we can do couldn't put the planes up and the helicopters up because of the winds um the firemen can't block a fire moving that quickly through dried brush and it's by the way as we've talked about on your show before it's not just hiko leaving the power on it's maui police department blocking the two entrances and exits to lahaina you talked about people burning in their cars I know some people who died in Lahaina, burned to wow. death because they could not get out. And nobody can explain to this day why those cars were trapped. Yeah. We have yeah. a friend. We have a friend. She got out of her car with her two kids, jumped in the ocean, and spent the whole night, eight hours treading water in the burning flamed water. And she and her two boys lived. The car torched. I mean, it oh, looks like it was melted yeah. in a smelting plant. So yeah. you've got a third issue, which is the water was turned off in many places by the water company. Because I mean, that's just that's just a mistake. So 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 I got it straight, Barry. What you're saying is the source of the fire, electrical down power lines, was kept on. Uh, putting out the fire, which would be used water, that was shut down. And then at the same time, uh, Hawaii uh, State Police were blocking uh, exit and entrance to Lahaina. Correct. Correct and correct. And it's Maui County Police, but you're right. Maui County and Police. Okay. I've, I've interviewed three or four people that were in that exit line in their cars screaming, let me out. We're going to die. And the people that lived either drove around the police up onto front lawns and around curbs and around stoplights, or they abandoned their cars and ran. The wow. ones, the cars that were left there were incinerated. You can see it on videos. It's online. Yeah, and the I've people seen that stayed in the cars, they got cooked, literally cooked, totally ready for, yeah. for an escape that never happened, basically. That's just, I mean, I, you know, even four months later to the day, I'm still stunned by the, the way this story went down. Now, as we do commemorate four months since this travis, travesty, tragedy, destructive force of nature and man, as it turns out, 
have any of the have any of the residents of Lahaina been made right? Because I was reading a story today online that was printed, good God, this morning, and it was a couple of residents basically saying, we're done. We, we've lost it all. We've got no reason to go back. And then there's a picture of them standing by one of these big walls of black plastic uh, fencing that you're talking about. And it's just, it, it, the picture is, is, is really kind of heartbreaking because they're just looking at this vast wasteland of just a plot of dirt where Lahaina used to be. And they're like, we're not going back. Have that, has anybody well, been made right? Well, obviously, no. Um, thousands have left the island because there's there's three problems. You can't go back to your home that doesn't exist. Or it's condemned and you can't go back. Number two, your ability to rebuild your home, the rumors and the we call it the coconut wireless, everybody talking to everybody after they talk to someone in, in authority. They're talking three, four, five years for permits. And and the third issue is where do you live in the meantime? Yeah. Lahaina, a special side of the island, has a monster housing shortage. Now there's 2,000 homes missing. Those people are living in hotels. This economy is driven 99% by tourism and in related industries. So the tourists are coming back for Christmas. Nobody knows where to put these people that have been dispossessed. Some are living in camps. Some are living on the beach. Some are sleeping on the golf course. I'm not talking about people that were homeless. I'm talking about people that were homed that yeah. now that now don't know where they're going to live. And it's an incredibly sad situation. Um, the The amount of aid that's going out is de minimis. There's you can get up to eight hundred dollars from the Oprah fund. Most people get turned down. Uh, the vast majority of people that have applied for SBA loans have been turned down. Um, the various programs through FEMA are hit and miss. It's it's a disaster that is so horrific. The president was here. He mumbled some remarks. He dozed off during the people's responses to his remarks. That's not a joke. You can look at the video. I saw it. Yeah. I know a lady that was sitting 10 feet from him, and she said he was out. Now, the White House said he was thinking, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Poor yeah. Jean-Pierre. I mean, I, she's got the worst job in the world trying to explain what happened today <laughs> and what happened yesterday. And she's got she's got the worst job in the world and she's the worst person for the worst job. Oh, in yeah. The world. I was going to say and she's not very good <laughs> at it. I, I just to, to make. Uh, insult to injury. So yeah. all the aid that, that President Biden promised when he was here uh, basically didn't materialize. I mean, his whole route from the airport was uh, a lot of FJB signs and why are you here signs. And after he made some silly jokes about he knows what the horror is of a fire. Yeah, because his he kitchen had a, burned down he, or something. He had around. a kitchen fire burn once and it Thank could have God. been really bad, but they got the appliance burnt, turn, fire put out. I mean, when you see the miles and miles of devastation here, it looks like yeah. the place was nuked. And well, Barry, I, I just want to, I, I just want to, uh, yeah, because we don't have much time left, but one of the things that I remember we were concerned about, we have to get your answer in about 30 seconds here, was that rich developers and celebrity types trying to buy up all this land. Does any truth come from that? There are in signs everywhere. Don't, 30 second signs, sorry, 30 signs everywhere saying we are not for sale. And there are laws that emergency ordinances that have been in place that are preventing rapid transfers of property. Go. Whether Very it happens fun. or not, I don't know. Well, I thank you. We're going to follow up with you. American Truth, uh, Truth Project org. Barry Nussbaum, God bless you, sir. Aloha. Thank you for joining us today. We'll talk to you again real soon. Take care. Aloha. Good to be with you. All right. All right. That's going to do it for State of the Nation today. I will be back on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next time on TNT Radio. Goodbye.